Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be starting out our new uh, London System speedrun. But before we dive right into the video, I want to quickly announce that I have just launched my uh, latest chessable course, so you can check it out in the description of this video. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's just dive uh, right into the uh, London System speedrun. Let's go for it. Uh, he plays d5 and we're gonna go for the second move, bishop to f4. Could also start knight f3, but uh, maybe we can get in some gambits after c5, e4. Here we get knight f6, I'm gonna be playing e3. And normally I'm expecting a lot of them to play with knight c6 without c5. Okay, and there we have it. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna go knight f3. This is still prep. And they either go bishop g4 or bishop to f5. Oh, he plays queen d7. This is strange. Uh, on queen d7, I mean, normally when they play like uh, in this position with bishop to g4, uh, there are a lot of ideas to go for bishop b5 and try to play against this knight. But now, now that he plays queen d7, bishop b5 might be uh, even stronger, I'd like to think. Because then, you know, we're going to get a knight e5 in. And his knight is pinned. Now, we might see an a6 move by my opponent, which I might replay with knight e5. Oh, he goes queen g4. Uh, well, this is definitely not something that I was expecting. He's trying to take this pawn. Uh, it doesn't really bother me all that much. I guess uh, we could simply castle. I think I'm going to do that. I mean, just trying to keep it like very simple. And yeah, I mean, ideas of going. 95 are still there and might also include in some kind of c4 uh, type of moves and then if he takes some queen maybe coming into a4 he plays bishop to d7 that is very reasonable move uh, breaking this uh, this pin but um, I guess we'll simply collect that pawn on c7 because it's sort of hanging and yeah now we are pretty much a material uh, if he goes rook c8 I think I'm dropping my bishop all the way to g3. And in case of, of a6, I might not even give up the bishop. I might just go back to e2, uh, keeping my uh, my bishop there. He plays knight e4, which I don't really like because he's moving the same piece twice in the opening. And now I would like to go knight c3, but that's ruining my pawn structure. So I think in that regard, knight b2, d2 is a little bit more clever. And if he takes, I think I'm just going to take back with a queen. Could take with a knight as well, seeking for the queen trade, but that's going to be making my knight on from f3 a little bit more passive. So I would just uh, prefer to take with a queen if he takes on d2. And in case he doesn't, then I might just take on my own on e4. Okay, he does take, and I'm going to take with a queen, as I was saying. And... Yeah, now there are all type of ideas of taking on c6 and then going knight e5, hitting the queen and then the bishop. We well, plays queen g5, which uh, pretty much just hangs the queen. Maybe he wanted to go to g6, but uh, mouse slipped. But we're just gonna take those, and uh, yeah, should be game very very soon. Okay, so see, we climbed like 161 points in the very first game. Uh, but I'm guessing once we'll get closer to like 1k, it's really gonna slow down dramatically and then we'll be able to get uh, more games against uh, these this people from the pool. Uh, Alright, let's get the next game and we're gonna be going for the London system this time. Please d5, I'm gonna go bishop to f4. Uh, my main account is usually between uh, 2550 and uh, and 2600. I mean, I picked at like 27, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm mostly a casual player. I don't really try hard on chess.com. Uh, bishop f5, and I'm gonna be playing knight f3. This is interesting when they are delaying knight f6. Oh, I've actually covered this. This is funny. I think you face this quite a lot in low ratings. Uh, when black is going for this and you could play knight h3 that's like the easy way to deal with this issue but even better is to give this check and now he's gonna play c6 and i'm gonna defend it with the bishop and now we're doing very well 
He's trying a5, and I'm just gonna be playing a4. And his initiative is kind of over. We have pawn takes on a4. I'm just gonna take with a bishop, keeping an eye on c6. And this, I think it's really a good opportunity to play knight e5, hitting queen and the pawn. Plays queen e6. Uh, I think we can just develop, or we can play c3, which might be even better at this moment. Because knight d3 is covered. Uh, this is a mistake that actually quite a lot of people do. They play c3 in this position, allowing this check on d3, but that's actually like covered because my knight was on e5. I think this was like an instructive mistake because he forgot that my knight covers it. And now I'm just up of three piece basically. And have a very easily winning position. Okay, I'm just gonna play knight d2. Yep, g6, and I'm just gonna castle. Or I could look to like <laughs> open up the position. Uh, at this point, it doesn't really matter since we are up a piece. Uh, I'm just going to castle, I guess, trying to keep it simple. And uh, yeah, also might be looking forward to get like knight b3 into c5. Uh, I don't really know why he's playing this slow. I'm gonna go bishop e5. Idea to take and then open it up with e4. Yeah, just gonna do that. And I'm gonna go e4 next, no matter what he takes with. Gonna take with a knight once again. Uh, he does not take and I can play e5 and f4. I'm just gonna be playing rook f1 though. Am I related? Uh, not really, <laughs> like directly, but we've known each other for quite some time. And we are both Romanian, <laughs> which I guess you can say we are related. But other than that, <laughs> no, not really. Uh, okay, he takes some b3, I'm gonna take with a knight. Okay, so we have an interesting question uh, in the chat if I'm uh, planning to become uh, a GM. And there's like a, always a tricky answer to that because um, everybody expects the answer yes. But, uh, you know, that could be like a long-term goal for me. It's not something that I'm prioritizing. Like my main focus is now uh, obviously my YouTube channel. Um, my chessable courses, which really take the, big, the biggest amount of my time, really. And yeah, the streams, basically, so yeah. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that police sound, but <laughs> they caught us in the speedrun, I guess. It's really annoying, but it's gonna go soon. Okay. All right, I think I'll just have to speed up a bit. I'm gonna trade queens next with queen g3. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, am I planning to be a GM? Maybe. But it's not like a life or death goal for me. Because it's, it's really, it takes like a lot of commitment that I'm not really willing to. Uh, yeah, I spend my time and effort and resources and all of that. But, uh, you know, I mean, the work that I'm doing is mostly chess related. So it's, it's, it's always nice because, you know, I can still like improve while, uh, yeah, while I'm making a living basically. So I'm going to go check and uh, meet him on the next move. Okay. Uh, all right, let's get a new London. I think the previous game was actually quite uh, instructive because he went for this kind of common theme where they go uh, bishop f5 and knight b4, trying to go for like an early attack on c2. But uh, yeah, I was prepared for it, luckily for me. So I'm gonna go e3, he plays with e6, we're gonna develop our knight. And he plays knight c6 once again, and I think I've covered this line recently on YouTube, when I was saying bishop b5 does not work that well and i'm gonna go knight d2 this time uh, it doesn't work that well because he could just defend the knight with this uh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna gonna play like the C3 move that I was about to play anyways, and his bishop b4 move is really kind of pointless. You shouldn't be playing like that. Mm, after a6, we're just gonna castle, and maybe I rushed a bit with castling. Honestly, I could have played knight e5, but yeah, at this point it's all good. Like I can play e4, open up the position, get a good position. But I think I'm gonna go more in like what a London player would do. But like e4, it's really the best move, so I'm gonna go for it. I wanted to play like knight e5 because it was like more thematic and more instructive, so to speak, for like the London. But e4 is just such a good move, I cannot uh, really uh, restrain my myself from making. Uh, okay, he plays knight g4, which was really kind of, asked, kind of asking for e5. I could play h3 as well. Uh, I'm just gonna go e5 though, with the idea to play h3 and then the knight is kind of running out of squares. Like he really has to play like h5 at this point, which is not a pretty move to make. Uh, g5, uh, I'm gonna play bishop to g3, because there's no really uh, other move. Uh, I had my own Twitch channel, but... Um, yeah, I mean, most of the streams are going to be on this channel, so yeah, I'm not really going to be using it. Uh, the only content that I do will be uh, here, and at least in like the near future, and on YouTube, so that's pretty much it. Okay, he takes with the queen. I also, by the way, uh, thought about taking on g5, hitting the knight, but I thought just taking... Playing a position or should be better. And now you see that the problem of the knight on g4 really remains. And we can just play h3. And his knight on g4 is now running out of squares. So uh, as simple as that, we just want a piece. I think you should try something like h5, you know, giving up the knight. But trying to open up the file for the rook. But we can just take and play knight h2. Because there's no attack really on the h file. Like it usually is, but not with such a bishop on g3. Okay, he decides to at least uh, win a pawn for the knight, which is reasonable, but uh, I'm gonna get knight e5 in, and yeah, that's just completely winning. Notice how this bishop on a5 is really out of play. Gonna take. Queen is under attack. Uh, I can take queen, which is really good. Could also take this, but I'm just gonna take his queen. I'm gonna go queen e2 and win back the knight. I could also look for ways to checkmate him, but I think we're gonna try to keep it as simple as we can in general. Okay, king d7, that is actually really asking to be mated. Really, really asking to be mated. Gonna take this knight though. <laughs> He's really asking for it, but I'm just gonna take the knight. Uh, he goes rook e8. Uh, I think I'm just gonna be bringing the rook or the knight. Gonna get my knight to e5. Yeah, I'm gonna play it. If king c7, yeah, I, I had like many ideas, but here is a nice checkmate with queen a7 and queen f7. Once he will take the rook, this is gonna be a mate. Okay. Uh, wait. I wanted to go for like d4, but that game got aborted. Ooh, we faced the England gamble. Let's take on e5. He plays d6, and I'm just gonna develop my knight. Yeah, I mean, I should be shaving more often, I guess. <laughs> uh, I don't really play over the board. Uh, yeah. At all. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna defend the pawn like I can take on d6 anytime. It's like really fine, but I just need to like develop It's just better Okay, he takes on d6. I'm gonna be taking it twice and then if he takes straight queens, I'm ready to go for it and then Gonna castle and we are ahead in development while being up a pawn as well, and this is under attack. Uh, he plays king to e7, I can just go knight d5, and the idea next is to like finish development. I'm gonna go like uh, for the fork now that he's allowing it. And yeah, we still need to get like developed, but um, <laughs> at this point it's, uh, it's not really that relevant since I'm up a million pieces. I'm gonna go g3 with this idea, and I might be able to actually save this knight finally enough. 
Because King D8, I can take D6, and then Rook D7 comes in. If he goes there, I can save my knight. So I bet you thought my knight is actually trapped in the corner. Not that it really mattered that much, but it's nice that we get to keep it, you know? Yeah, just gonna go for this and pick up uh, uh, the bishop, because the rook is defended by the bishop. Okay, he resigns and asks for a rematch. I don't really want to do rematches, honestly. I want to get, like, uh, as many playstyles as I can. So, yeah, I'm going to go for a new game. And we do get a brand new London. Let's see. That was actually an England gambit. But uh, he plays the duchy, which is pretty interesting. Let's go for bishop f4. Because uh, even though we play London in general, the point is that we play London against everything. So, I'm going to go for this even against the Dutch. Not like... Uh, the London is bad against the Dutch. I actually think uh, the Dutch is where one of the openings where the London setup works the best. So uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see. I'm going to go e3. He plays b6. This is actually strange because normally, theoretically speaking, he should be playing like knight f6, knight c3, g6. And then we go h4. And white is getting a lot of interesting attacking kind of lines. And against this, I could actually be playing this move just to annoy the hell out of my opponent. And I'm going to play knight c3 and then long castle. If he plays g6, we always uh, have ideas of pushing the h pawn, and I could also play e4 at the appropriate moment. I'm just waiting to see what he wants to do with the dark squad bishop, basically. Okay, that is not a great move, because we can just take, and if he takes, Quinn will actually be hanging, and he does resign, so. That was pretty quick. I'm not gonna rematch. Uh, let's go d4. We're already playing in the 1100s. So we do see the same 96 uh, setup that I actually have a uh, specific video about. And uh, yeah, we see the slides with knight f6. And as I was saying, bishop b5, uh, it's really effective when this guy from c8 stays on like f5 or g4. So now if I go bishop b5, he'll play bishop d7. And then it's not really that effective. So we're just going to be playing normal. Idea to get like knight d2, bishop d3 in. And the fact of the matter is, like, a lot of people in this ratings just play bishop d3 automatically. And we're just going to allow him to take on f4, in fact. Because that's really a pleasant situation for us. Just look at the bishop difference. The bishop on f1 uh, versus this guy. And I meant this guy with, like, red arrow. They're going to get knight d3, bishop d3, like, knight e5. It's just really easy to play for me. If he castles long, uh, I mean, I'm, we're just going to start the attack. While, you know, his attack is going to be way slower on the other side. And this is actually like a very bad move to make because it's just going to speed up uh, my attack. When in fact he thought he's going to slow it down. Because now b5 will actually come up with the opening up of the a file. So now white is actually just uh, crashing. I think why was better anyways. That, but now the advantage is really increasing uh, quite quickly and dramatically in the same time so i'm gonna go knight e5 just because he cannot take us that will be a fork and i'm also hitting the f7 pawn so now he really has a very uncomfortable position because b5 is gonna come on the next move as well putting even more pressure on this c6 knight and he plays queen f8 but now the same b5 move is okay and he takes and now i get to take the knight but the pawn on a6 remains under attack and he has to lose something uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we can take here and then take this, but I'll, I'm just gonna take twice, like, this is, should be, like, really cleanest. Or actually, there's, like, a funny tactic, because we might queen. If he takes my bishop, I'm going to queen. This is hilarious. And now we actually get to queen. Look at the pawn. Look at the pawn. The MVP pawn. <laughs> Look at my pawn. <laughs> we got a new queen. Queen a5. B6 is just going to play queen b4. We can trade queens because I'm going to have another queen on the board. <laughs> this is hilarious. That was actually like a really funny point. Okay, we got a win. Uh, I think again, like that was a very cute tactic. Like, uh, honestly speaking, anything was winning at this point. Like, I was initially thinking to take one e4 with a winning position. But... Yeah, I mean, that was just like a cute idea to temporarily give up the bishop because now the pawn is unstoppable. Look at this pawn, guys. I mean, how often do you see a pawn promoting uh, in the first 20 moves? I think that was pretty funny. <laughs> and 
Uh, yeah, I mean, also, like, remember this idea that, that I said a little bit earlier uh, while playing this London? Because everyone plays bishop g3 hoping that the opponent takes on g3. And when they don't, you just end up with, like, a passive bishop on g3. Or, I, I don't really mean to say passive, but it's, like, a little bit misplaced. So, yeah, just allowing the bishop to stay there, getting this structure. Just look at the bishop, how nicely it's really activated, and how passive this guy on d7 really is. And... Yeah, we can castle, go queen e2, g3, normally black castle short as well. We get knight e5 and it's just uh, really pleasant to play for white. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for the next game. And looks like we get white pieces again. Uh, gonna go bishop f4 and we do get a little bit of a dodgy setup. Uh, I could play e4, try to punish him, but I'm just gonna be playing it uh, kind of slow, like kind of London thematical. Let's say, just gonna go knight d2 with the same idea if he takes, and he just drops the bishop back to e7, which is really strange. He goes for f5, and mm, yeah, I think I'm just, I could like create a square. Uh, I could really create a square, I could play knight e5, idea to play queen h5, he does develop, which was really expected, and I could try to open up the position quickly with g4. But I think I'll actually play h3 first, just waiting for him to castle. Because if I was playing g4 immediately, I think there are good chances that he might have got scared and wouldn't have castled. So I really wanted him to castle short, but uh, he plays this knight e4 move, which I think is decent. But I think he can just maybe play f3. Or take on f5, open up the g file. I think that's like the most logical thing to do. And if pawn takes, then mm, hmm, I'm actually like not so sure about this, like what I did, because there might be this move coming in. I kind of want to play queen h5. I think I'm going to start with rook g1. And if he does go for this, I'm just going to take one e4 with like the bishop, I'm thinking. Could take with a knight, but I mean, just bishop should be fine. And then I want my queen to come into like h5. Yeah, I think this is okay. This is a bit of a weird game though. But if I somehow like manage to castle and take on g7, should be made. Okay, we have bishop to f6, I'm just gonna... Castle long? I mean, that's losing like a huge tempo. Now I should definitely be having a free hand on the on the king side and thinking whether I could sack in like any way, but I think maybe just knight g4 is good. Like I can do so many things in this position is a little bit uh, strange. That I cannot really decide, but I'm gonna play this way with this and this. This is a funny tactic, like winning the exchange. Also keeping an eye on this bishop. Uh, okay, he plays queen e7. And I could be taking on f6, I could go knight h6 check as well. Uh, but I'm really running out of time, so I'm just gonna double. We really have to speed up here. Because this is getting way closer than it should. But this guy's playing incredibly well so far. Okay, knight h6 is actually... Was blundered by my opponent. And now we get to just win on the spot. I mean, he played, like, well. <laughs> after he played the Super Dubious opening. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, he found, like, some decent decent moves. But uh, now I should be in the driver's seat. And rook g7 might be a huge threat. Just winning the queen next. Might go for it anyways. But I'm just gonna keep it simple. He can take on f2. Shouldn't really bother us. Uh, gonna do it this way. Not allowing queen f2 anymore. And then rook g7. Rook g7, pinning. And I think I'm gonna be cheeky. I'm gonna play... Rook g6 with the idea that he can take my rook, but then I take on c6 with check. Okay, and then we pick up his queen. 
it was definitely not necessary, but I think it makes the win a little bit easier. And also we can flex. Okay, maybe queen d6. Yeah, could have played it earlier, it was better, but I'm gonna go for it anyways. Okay, picking up the knight. And the bishop. And should be made soon. Holy smokes! All right, we got a ma the meet with 0.4 seconds. Let's go. <laughs> I had a feeling like here it was really kind of a gamble thing because uh, he could either go there or there. But I knew this looks too obvious to be a mate and he'll try it there. But okay, I had to like pre-move this. That was like the best guess. Oh my God. <laughs> it should never really get this close. Okay, let's go d4 and then second move bishop f4. And he plays d5, I'm gonna go e3. He still plays with 96, so we see that in like 1100 ratings. Uh, they do play this like uh, double 96 and 96 without c5 quite a lot, so. Uh, I'm just gonna do it like in my video, and he plays with bishop f5. And whenever they do develop the bishop to f5 or like g4, uh, usually the idea is to like play for bishop b5 at 95, and this way you're just getting um big pressure on this knight so e6 runs into 95 and already there's not like an easy way for black to defend uh against that pressure and this is already like the losing mistake because now the queen is under attack and yeah just seven moves just seven moves guys against this double knight setup okay let's go for the new game bishop to f4 e3 Come on, opponent, make a move. Okay, he plays bishop g4. It's funny, guy. If I play e3, he takes my queen. Uh, how do we deal with those? <laughs> this is a good one. Um, just gonna play knight f3. Could have played h3, something more provocative, but I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna go e3 next. I'm gonna play like h3. Yeah. If he takes, I'm gonna take. Uh, back on f3 and taking on f4 can be met by pawn takes. Yeah, just gonna play like knight d2. If he takes on f4, he is my guest, but not really worried about entering that structure. Although it is not as pleasant as it was before because this bishop got active, but you know, it wasn't really that big of an alternative at that point. Plays the same knight c6. If I go bishop b5, he might just play knight e7 because the knight is still on, on g8. So this is something that you want to watch out while playing this lines. Because when the knight is on f6, then the bishop on b5 is uh, could be potentially very strong. Just gonna play with play it simple with like c3. Uh, yeah, I don't mind this because uh, it's strengthening the control over the e5 square. It usually like makes it also much harder for black to uh, to break and we can play like bishop d3, queen e2, castles, okay, he plays bishop there. Uh, but, but generally it's just that we get a knight on e5, which is really unpleasant for our opponent to deal with. Maybe queen b3 is an annoying move now. Hitting this pawn. He does castle. So I think that was definitely a success because I believe the king is pretty vulnerable on that side. Gonna go bishop b5. I'm not sure I love this move, but maybe we can take and then go knight e5. Uh, okay, I can castle, but I like knight e5 better now because if he takes it, we're gonna be taking back and we're gonna be forking. Uh, his queen and the knight. So the knight on e5 is actually a monster now. He plays knight a4, I'm just gonna uh, attack it. If he plays b6, that might turn out to be an additional weakness, and we might even play b4 next. Yeah, just gonna go b4, hitting the knight. If he goes to d to b7 and a7 and hanging, with a mate frat on a8, actually. If he goes to c6, but we can just collect, and then queen a6, queen b7 mate. So that should be GG.
Yeah, just gonna force the mate on knight d7. That was a weird game though, to be honest. I'm actually uh, not familiar with like the move by move theory against the uh, second move bishop d4. Like, like I'll have to check this after the stream, but uh, I'm not sure what the best way to play against this really is. I'm guessing you can play knight d2 and then knight f3. I wasn't really bothered by him taking on f3, but uh, yeah, just to clarify this thing, I'm okay uh, with them like taking on f4, doubling my pawns, because like for example here, uh, we do get positions like uh, in general uh, Yeah, I'm trying to come up with more of a, like a typical example, but let's say uh, my opponent plays something like knight f6 Let's say I play bishop d3 they castle like castle they play like a6 uh, My queen goes to like e2 and they play like this I, I go like there and then the knight is coming into e5 and why wouldn't you like having these pawns because then the knight is just like such a monster on e5 and whenever they take we can take and then undouble the pawns so uh, it's even better hey thank you for making it this far into the video and uh, if you're enjoying this type of content i want to remind you that uh, you can join me while i'm live on the count live channel on twitch and uh, you can ask me any kind of questions that uh, you may have about these videos and uh, yeah i'd like to see you there so thank you for watching and i'll see you around on the channel take care